right, unit for module one, the 70s. There are so many bands that are out in the 70s, it is impossible for me to talk about every single band and even every single genre and part. So I'm going to give a little bit of an overview of what went on in the 70s. By this point, rock and roll music has been around, you know, for what, 15 years, right? Something like that. And some of the thrust of it has, 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 has changed, and now we have it diverged out in a lot of different areas and so forth. So in the 70s, in a lot of ways, it's kind of this me generation uh, overtook it. Went back to the basics and moved to this multiple option society. Um, music being this big business as, as, a by, as a byproduct and not as an art. And that's one thing that they kind of uh, kind of lost. Some groups that continued in the 70s, the Rolling Stones, Chicago, the, uh, Who, the, the, the Grateful Dead, and uh, as well as the singer-songwriters, fusion rock, progressive rock, soft rock, country rock, disco, all this and, and a lot more. So basically I'm just going to talk about a couple bands, a couple different styles, and uh, it's, it's still going to be a lot of talking, so hang in there. Hold on. All right, a British heavy metal evolves. Uh, we go into uh, a band like, I'll say like Led Zeppelin, which remember this, most, uh, uh, you know, I don't know, a third of Led Zeppelin's music is acoustic, so I, I wouldn't necessarily call them all heavy metal, but definitely there's an edge to it, and if you listen to a piece from Led Zeppelin, like A Whole Lot of Love, Kashmar, uh, you can definitely hear some elements of that, and, and probably one of those, a good soft, softer example would be Stairway to Heaven, which you know all these tunes, and if you look at the format of, of uh, of Led Zeppelin, you know, is it blues based? Can you hear a lot of blues in there singing and, and, the, and the guitar playing? Uh, is it, it, can you hear a lot of the vestiges of that going on? Yeah, yeah, you really can, and, 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 you know, in a lot of ways. And it kind of goes on, and, and British uh, Middle of Balls, you think of Black Sabbath, and you go check out Paranoid. Um, this is a great tune. And Ozzy Osbourne will talk about how basically uh, they had this doom and gloom music going on. He really hated the term heavy metal. What is that supposed to mean? Bled or something like that. He, he hated that term on there. And basically, the, and it, one cool story he talks about, like he played his record for his family, and they go stop, and they said, Ozzy, are you sure you're only having an occasional beer? You know, so like, they were like blown away with that first record as well. Glitter Rock, this is basically uh, rock that kind of goes around with the theatrics of the stage. So some bands like uh, David Bowie as Siggy Stardust would be one. Um, in a lot of ways, a Kiss would be another band that would be this glam rock as well. There's glitter rock going on. Uh, so David Bowie, check out Siggy Stardust if you haven't heard that. Uh, the Velvet Underground. I want to check out a song like like Heroin, 1967, and it's very minimalistic and it's very different. And if you uh, uh, listen to that, and this kind of goes into the punk movement that went on in the 70s. And I love punk music. It's something so refreshing to me. And again, mostly it's these three or four chord songs and uh, these kids that just have life and want to live life and they love life and want to go out there and say what they want to say and kind of like the garage bands that happened you know, 10 or 15 years earlier when the punks come out as well. And some origins of the punk music, uh, the MC5's Kick Out the Jams would be a good example. This is 68. This is this Detroit hard rocking band. Uh, the Ramones, I love the Ramones. Uh, uh, big Screen Bop, view. I mean, that, that, that first record from the Ramones is, just a, is the first piece of vinyl that most of the British punk bands had. And I think this is kind of the thing that folks don't realize, that punk gets popular from the British, but America is the one who started the punk movement. And, and you go there, and the Six Pistols, I mean, the piece of vinyl they had to listen to was the Ramones. And so we'll get to the Six Pistols. A good example would be uh, Anarchy in the USA, God Save the Queen, as some examples of this punk music. And they, the Six Pistols were in and out so quick. Uh, and there's a lot of other punk bands that I just don't have time to talk about, but there's a lot more to that as well. Check out the Wikipedia and read some more about punk music. It's incredible. Some other, the, some other, mainstream, the, other, other mainstream British music, uh, Fleetwood Mac, uh, the Rumors album sold tons of records, and this is when the record industry started realizing they can make a lot of mu money from this music, and they can make, they have these big coliseums sold out and whatnot like that. Uh, Fleetwood Mac, uh, "Go uh, Go Your Own Way" would be a good a good example. Uh, uh, Elton John, uh, "Crocodile Rock," 
uh, would be a good example for, of that. As, and, uh, and basically, you see, uh, Peter Frampton, uh, and he basically had that record, Frampton Comes Alive, that he sold a baz bazillion records in there. And Baby I Love Your Way is a good, good song from that album there. And really, you know, I don't want to make anybody upset or mad or whatnot, but if you listen to uh, Frampton Comes Alive, it's okay. It's, it's not a bad record, it's, it, but was it that great? Uh, I would say no, not compared to the Beatles. And what happened was the machine happened. They started pushing that record to the, to the, to the radio and to all of the TV and this, that, and other. And basically just pushing this record out. Everybody was buying this record because everybody else was buying this record. Uh, so that's really what happened. And when I talked to some folks that were around this period buying this record, they said, yeah, I just bought it because everybody else bought this record. Down there. Well, we kind of get to uh, the mainstream rock in America. Uh, Creedence Clearwater Revival, we talked about them a little bit. Um, uh, Doobie Brothers, listen to the music. Uh, Proud Mary for Creedence Clearwater Revival would be a good example. Doobie Brothers, listen to the music uh, would be a good example. Steve Miller Band, Fly Like an Eagle, you hear something of that. Uh, Journey, uh, Will in the Sky. There's a lot of really great Journey uh, songs, and you know, probably somewhere right now, someone's singing a "Open Arms" or "Faithfully" somewhere or another in a karaoke bar. I'm sure. Uh, the Southern Rock sound, in some ways, calling Southern Rock is like calling Rock Rock because Rock came from the South in a lot of ways. But the Almond Brothers Band, uh, Whippy Post, a big example. Leonard Skinner, of course, Freebird, a big good one. Sweet Home Alabama, uh, Kansas. Uh, kind of a progressive art in some ways. Uh, they had a violin in there, so you think of a song like Dust in the Wind. Um, Sticks can be mainstream or progressive, I guess, in, in some ways. So Come Sail Away. And one album in there, Mr. Roboto, uh, uh, if you listen to that from, from the 80s in there, that's a, definitely a piece of concept uh, uh, album going on in there. Uh, Foreigner, uh, Feels Like the First Time, so that's kind of that. American Glam Rock, Alice Cooper, uh, School's Out, and basically he just came out there and just blew audiences away with a stage act. And and now, and also with Kiss, Rock and Roll All Night Party Every Day. Now what happens is, what's more important? Is the music important or is the theatrics more important? And so that's kind of the chicken and egg that you got to ask yourself when you do that. Some of the art rock going on, Pink Floyd's kind of hard to put in one place, but I kind of put them in this, this avant-garde trends that they were doing uh, with money and some other recording techniques they did at the time there with this Dark Side of the Moon uh, album that came out. Singer-songwriters, a bunch of them, James Taylor, uh, Jim Croce, Time in the Bottle, uh, James Taylor, How Sweet It Is, Jackson Brown, Running on Empty, Billy Joel, uh, Just the Way You Are, so just some of Incredible music, and one thing about a singer-songwriter, you know, they're writing about their own experiences, and they can play this uh, instrument. And it's, it is different when you write a song for you, and you can play this song. It, there is a difference in there, and I think that's one of the powerful things about singer-songwriters. Reggae, got to talk about Bob Marley. Incredible music, uh, the Redemption song, uh, just uh, a piece of work in, in so many ways. This great uh, music. Um, all these funk bands were out: Sly and his Family Stone, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Uh, maybe Earth, Wind, and Fire. Listen to the music. Uh, Sly and the Family Stone. Dance to the music is a good example. And there, uh, country rock. Eagles, Hotel California. On there. Then we get some some of the soft rock. The Carpenters, Close to You, Barry Manilow. Uh, let's see, uh, Mandy would be one. Uh, Neil Diamond, uh, Sweet Caroline, uh, Olivia Newton John. Um, honestly, I love you. And then we get to what everybody think music is in the 70s is disco and as you can tell it's so much more than this disco Donna Summers is probably the, the, the most famous person from the disco era Bad Girls is a good example for this disco music uh, the Bee Gees and uh, if you listen to, if you ever seen Saturday Night Fever uh, for me all those tunes are just some great songwriting tunes it's got a disco beat to it and one thing one, one of the problems was because uh, they were making so much money they were thinking okay people are dancing to this beat so guess what? Let's put this beat on every song. Now what happens if you put the same beat for every single song? It gets old really, really quick. So it's not one beat that's going to make you move to the music and want you to buy this music. And that's what the, the record companies were thinking. If you listen to a, a song uh, like More Than a Woman from the Bee Gees or Staying Alive, they had some really great uh, uh, music that came out of there. 
And also, go find some coverage from the 1969 Disco Demolition Night. And uh, it's his local news coverage of that. And there was this backlash that people hated disco. And I remember when they were coming out with Saturday Night Fever, they were saying, uh, basically, you know, why make, a, why make a movie about music that everybody hates? And that kind of re disco back a little bit there. So there's a lot of other disco bands out there, and a lot of people had disco songs, even though uh, they hated it. And a lot of reason why they hated it, because there was a drum machine, and that was taking away money, music, money for musicians as well. And it is that one beat over and over again, and people were dancing to this beat that, that, that they had nothing, they had no heart to it, no soul to it. And, um, you know, that's, that was kind of the big backlash against disco. So, quick 70s overview. There's so much more music to it. Go on the internet and find it, and Wikipedia, and uh, rock and roll.